Just when you thought taxes couldn't get any trickier, the Internal Revenue Service, or IRS, is warning taxpayers about a new scam. Schools First Federal Credit Union is here to talk more about this and how we can reduce the risk of being a victim of a government imposter scam. Joining us today is Nathan Calhoun, Kelvin Point Branch Manager. Welcome back, Nathan. Thank you very much. Yes, okay, so Nathan, scams are such an unfortunate topic. We hate when we hear about them and people being scammed, and there's a way to avoid them. Can you tell us a little bit more, though, I understand that there's a mail scam that's going on right now. Absolutely. Uh, you know, government or IRS imposter scams are nothing new. Um, we've come on here and talked about them before. In fact, the Federal Trade Commission says that they're the number one most reported type of scam out there. Mm -hmm. um, but this one has a couple of changes that it's doing uh, than the ones we've seen in the past to obviously lure more victims in to yeah. going along with the scam. Um, instead of receiving like an electronic communication from what potentially would be the IRS, this one actually delivers a letter through the postal system. Um, and instead of talking to people about, you know, taxes being owed, it's promising a refund. Mm -hmm. So a typical version of this scam would be a potential victim would receive a mailing, you know, saying that it's from the IRS. Mm -hmm. And it's advising of an unclaimed refund that's available, uh, attempting to lure people in. Um, and to unlock the refund, it says all you have to do is give us some of your personal identifying info. So it's asking for things like pictures of your ID, your bank routing information, um, or even your social security number. When this information is handed over, it's given to a scammer, and now the scammer is potentially stealing your identity. Wow, okay, I mean, if I get a letter in the mail from the IRS, I'm gonna pay attention to it so I can understand why people see that yeah. and maybe fall victim to being scammed. How can we identify this scam to ensure we catch it before we do fall victim? So in this particular version, what we're seeing is is that a postal service, maybe just a delivery service in general, will drop off an envelope. It'll be one of these cardboard envelopes and inside of it will be a letter from the IRS. It'll have the IRS logo or masthead at the top. Um, so if this sounds familiar to you or it's something that you receive in the future, be very cautious. Um, another thing is when you're reviewing the letter, if you kind of see some awkward phrasing, maybe a spelling mistake, mm -hmm. grammar error, something along those lines, this is a red flag for uh, fraud, definitely. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. I mean, even with emails, we want, I'll look for that. If I think I'm being scammed, something's kind of mispronounced or misspelled, so that's helpful to know. But let's say we find a letter that doesn't fit that exact description that you just gave us, but it still seems kind of off. Do you have any tips to double check, double check its validity? You know, I would just say be very careful about the things that you get and the, uh, the interactions you have with these kind of letters, or any kind of letter, really. Um, I would say that one of the easy first things I would do is, is I would look on the letter and generally they're going to give you some sort of contact info, a phone number, email address. But instead of interacting with those numbers, I'd go to the IRS website, which is irs.gov, and mm -hmm. just verify that information, that contact information. If that's what's listed on the IRS website, it's legit, but, you know, in most cases it's probably not. Mm -hmm. The other thing, while I'm at the IRS website, I would compare the filing info against the letter to what's available on the IRS's website. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing you can do, you know, generally, as we discussed, you know, a lot of these communications will have errors, they'll have grammar issues, maybe punctuation or spelling mm -hmm. issues. Um, government agencies like the IRS really scrutinize their communications before they send them out. They're gonna look polished, they're gonna look professional mm -hmm. when they're actually from the IRS. So if you're seeing those kind of errors, stay away, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a, a big red flag. Yeah. And lastly, just a healthy amount of skepticism, I think, uh, out there in the world will help. You know, doing things like instead of just immediately calling the number on a letter, but verifying independently yeah. Yeah. Um, will help you with just even outside of this kind of scam. Yeah, so anytime receiving money or asking for money, just really making sure you do that research on yeah. your for yourself first. Mm -hmm. Are there any other ways to verify that communications from the IRS are legitimate? You know, one thing I can just tell people in general is, is that the IRS does not communicate people through uh, electronic channels. Mm -hmm. um, they're generally not emailing you. They're not going to text you, and they're definitely not going to interact with you on social media. Mm -hmm. If you're receiving those kind of communications and it's somebody claiming to be the IRS, stay clear of that. Mm -hmm. These are always going to be attempts at getting your personal identifying information or just an attempt to get you to click on a link, yeah. which would download you know, some form of malicious software onto your device which leads to further uh, uh, fraud or scams in the future. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you suspect 
uh, fraud or a scam, uh, you can actually go report that at fraud.org. Okay. Or if you want to just learn more about proper reporting mechanisms, go to the IRS's website, which, as I mentioned, is irs.gov. All righty. So biggest takeaway from this, you really have to do your research. Double check everything. When you're seeing something in the mail from the IRS, go to the website, see if you're seeing what they're talking about in that letter that was mailed to you, and see if it matches up. Absolutely, mm -hmm. like I say, skepticism in this world, sadly, uh, it is a healthy thing yeah. um, because we do get a lot of communication either through digital channels mm -hmm. or written channels, independently verifying, not clicking on links, not calling the phone number in the communication, but going to the website that we know and trust yeah. and finding that information is the safest way. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. That's important to know because I feel like with mailing, that was kind of the old school way to scam people. So now we're so much more alert with online if we get something weird emailed to us, but now scammers are kind of going back to that old way where now we kind of think it's a little bit more official, but we still have to do that research. Nathan, thank you. All righty, to our viewers, you can visit one of the many schools first federal credit union branch locations as seen on the screen. And you can find out more online by going to schoolsfirstfcu.org.